Okay. All right, we're going to have a study today on uh, the tree of knowledge and the tree of life. Uh, and uh, analyze this. And this is from Genesis chapter 3. And how this way, we call it a way of trying to seek truth, seek, uh, uh, well, actually, it's two different. Uh, it's two different things, and we can under both headings is morality and uh, wisdom. Uh, it's spell wisdom right. Uh, wisdom. So, how are you going to find wisdom? And how are you going to find reality and morality? So both of these things are related, and both of them are under the same heading of uh, how, do, how do you find these two things, morality and wisdom. So there is a way to go, and that's the tree of knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the, the, the other source is the tree of knowledge of God. Now, this is, the, this is the way of the world. This is how the world tells us every day that if you want to be the, the two things, good and God, that is, uh, knowing everything and being uh, a good person, then you need to know <clears throat> the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because that will be the fruit The fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is going to be the result. What the results you're looking for are both of these. The, the results you're looking for is to be a good person, moral person, and to be a wise person. <clears throat> so how do you, uh, along, over on this side, we're going to focus over here for a minute. So morality. How do we attain morality on this side of the ledger? We attain morality through education. Oh, my. I'm a little dry on this thing. Wet, that is. It's too wet. Education. <coughs> and, uh, so education is equated with morality all the time. If you're smart, why, why do we have, what do you have gangs, what do you have starvation, what do you have uh, all kinds of conflicts and evil things happening in the world because of ignorance. And if you, if you get rid of ignorance, if you educate the world, they will be better people. <clears throat> Their morality will improve. So science is the source of morality, science and education. <clears throat> Over here, what is the source of uh, morality? <clears throat> well, it is God. Why is it God? Because he is omniscient. That means he knows everything. If you know everything, then you're going to know what's good and evil. And this also, have, God knows, God is good. <clears throat> he knows good and evil. And, because, and that, good, that morality is tied into knowing everything. He knows everything. When you need to know what to do, what not to do, <clears throat> is it a... Is it a uh, is it a point of being educated, making the right choices, right? <clears throat> making uh, educated uh, conclusions, coming to those conclusions, getting 
getting all your ducks in a row and figuring this all out, and then you you can you can make the right choice, and so then you're going to be a, a better person, a good person. You're going to stay away from evil. And you're going to do good. Well, this is this is a uh, what science, this world view, the knowledge of good and evil. This worldview that the world follows is what they teach, is what they believe. <clears throat> so, who are, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, pro proponents of this. Now, this is a bad picture of it, but what does this picture represent? <clears throat> it re represents the scientific, the educational part. Apple. Why did uh, Apple choose this apple with a big mouth? bite out of it to represent their system, <clears throat> their idea. This is represents a whole ideology. If you're educated, <clears throat> if so Apple is about presenting all of this knowledge to everybody. Anybody can have access to uh, through a computer, through an Apple computer, through all the knowledge in the world. So what is the purpose is to educate people. And to educate people, there's going to be uh, more, less intolerance, more, less hatred, less uh, <clears throat> whatever negative you want to put out there. Education is the savior of the world. That's what's going to save us, education. And this is the scientific end of it. Science and science and morality. They want to stick them together. <clears throat> so we're going to find a second guy that is more on the moral terms. That uh, and that is uh, Doctor Carl Young. So anybody who does not know Carl Young, he is one of the. Uh, elite uh, founding fathers of psychology and uh, he's, he's one of the most influential uh, psychologists of all time. Very, very well known and very influential. So what did he say? He said humans, people need to seek the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now he quoted this and he said it on purpose. They need to find this a uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why? So you can, once you know within yourself, in your heart, what is good and what is evil, check your, it, it, you, then you come to a point of self-realization, who you really are. And self-realization leads to self-actualization. And, and this whole system is to build a better person, a more whole person, a more mature person, a good person. Now you can choose good instead of evil. Yes, and that's the purpose of this, the tree. The purpose of that ideal, becoming educated, knowing, one is knowing, this, this guy's knowing yourself. You will change yourself through this knowledge, uh, knowledge of good and evil. And um, Mr. Jobs, through Apple, is saying, you will change. You will. The world will change. The world will change for the better because of knowledge. Knowledge will change the world. It will change the morality of the world. So this is a way to go. It's the way of the world. <clears throat> now, not only these, but also every religion in the world teaches if you want to be moral, you need to. It's, it's, a, it's a, every religion in the world, it teaches that our goal is, is morality, to reach a moral high plane where you, some teach that you become God, some teach that you uh, are closer to God, that you become aware of God, it's uh, a, a, all religions have a step program, different steps 
uh, I believe, uh, I'll have to look it up sometime, I just can't remember. I think Buddhism has eight steps, eight, the eightfold path. Uh, the Muslim religion has six, there's six things you're supposed to do, include, you know, praying uh, daily and also uh, taking a pilgrimage to Mecca and not doing certain things and doing certain things. So <clears throat> every religion has some step program to try to get you to this point, the tree of life, God, omniscience, knowing everything, knowing what is good and evil, <clears throat> but they're trying to attain it through a step program. So that involves human effort, human discipline, human duty. <clears throat> now, every, every Christian you talk to said, well, the difference between or well, they've been taught, not every Christian, but most Christians are taught that the difference between one religion and other religions, Christianity and other religions, is, is all of the religions are religions of works and Christianity is a religion of grace. Works meaning you have to, you know, eight steps or six steps or some path or you have some deeds, you have some quest, you're trying to attain something. And uh, Christianity says we, this barrier is broken because God came down in the form of Jesus Christ. He revealed the Father to us so that we could know God. We can know, and, and when, once we know God, we know when there's omniscience. He knows everything through His grace, through Jesus Christ. He will teach us, lead us, guide us <clears throat> through the path of revelation of God. That is, God is doing everything, God's revealing, God's teaching. God initiated, uh, he's the, the Bible calls him the author and finisher of our faith. He does it all. So this is what most Christians will acknowledge. But, however, in practicality, 90% of all Christianity, 90% of all uh, uh, preaching, 90% of all books, almost all of it is centered around some different method some different method of attaining grace. Some method of it. So, although this is the way, this is Christian, uh, the way Christianity goes, lots of Christian teaching is involved in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. How to be good. Steps to take to attain holiness. Uh, they create their own little met their own little methodologies. So uh, I went to uh, a church up here in, uh, I live in Sacramento, California. There's a church up here in the area, uh, Bayside of, uh, uh, of Granite Bay, and it's a huge, huge church. I went there for different reasons. I uh, had many friends there, and I, I was doing uh, some work there. But at any rate, the pastor there, um, Johnson, Pastor Johnson, was every week was another series of the four steps to be, we'll just say, to be better. And that would make me become a better Christian, become a better disciple, become a better father, become a better parent, become a better man, become a better woman, become a better something. <clears throat> and uh, everything was uh, four steps, seven steps, three steps, whatever. And then in, within, this, within this organization, Bayside, they have all these little groups that meet all the time. And they have 
uh, 12 step programs, and none of them agree with each other with what the steps are or how you would do this. But there's uh, there's many, many little programs that they do. Uh, and all these programs are trying to duplicate what he's saying. And, and none of this stuff ever works. There's no step program to be a better person. There's no step program to... Because uh, all of this is works. If you're doing something to attain a goal, that is called works. Don't care how many steps it is or where it, it's all dependent upon a person's personal willpower, their ambition, uh, and I mean, I think it's, it's self evident. <clears throat> so, this is a huge problem. This huge problem in the church today is following the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So I had a, my wife had a friend of hers over the other day, and she, I heard them talking on the couch. And she says, you know, when I got to this point, I told my pastor that I found, when I figured out it was not about, Christianity was not about morality. And I confronted my pastor. I said, hey, what? I just figured this out. I've been a Christian for, you know, a very long time. And uh, now what do I do? Uh, and what he said to her was, welcome to the rest of your life. But uh, I don't think that's the greatest answer. But uh, the answer over here is this is not a Christian way. Trying to learn, trying to achieve, uh, setting goals. Uh, I go to a men's breakfast once a month. Once a month, and there's a couple hundred guys there. Every month they tout up another guy, and he'll give... Uh, He's got a program. He's figured this all out. He's got a program that he's going to tell people how to become a, usually since it's a men's group, how to become a more a, a good man, a proper man, uh, <clears throat> a godly man, whatever they want to slap on it. But it's every method is different. Every in it every week. Every week, a different guy with a different methodology gets up there and tells his story. <clears throat> and this isn't told. It isn't told. It's, it's, it's extremely sad that because this is the way of the Bible. Now, one of my favorite guys in the Bible... Well, I'm saying my, two, my favorite guy about one of them is John. Now, John wrote the last three books of the Bible, the Gospel of John and the three uh, letters from John. They were, they were written way, way to the end of his life. So this is what he said. This is what John said. This is the work of God. Do you want to work for God do you want to do God's work? This is what these people are obsessed with. The work. How do I please God? What kind of work can I do to please God? To, to ingratiate myself towards God? I want to please Him, so what do I do? So this is what John said. His conclusion after being uh, at 90, age 90, being a Christian for 60 or 70 years. He said, this is the work of God to believe on him who God has sent. That's Jesus Christ. Believe in Jesus Christ. Have faith in God. Work this system. Work this system where God says, I will reveal myself to you. Not because of what you do. Not because of of your uh, uh, deeds or misdeeds. You don't have anything to do with it. I have everything to do with it. I come down, and, I, and God doesn't break this system. <clears throat> See, over here in, in many churches, they say, yes, Christ came down and gave us salvation. And now we must start being better and be like Jesus. We need to be like Jesus. Well, how do you do that? He's God. 
That's who Jesus was, God. <clears throat> We're supposed to be like him. So they try, they want to please him, so they start some kind of system of works. <clears throat> so over here, God says, what is his work? The work of, of uh, Christians is to believe on him that, that sent him. And the ideal of belief and faith is a huge, huge, huge ideal because faith, people say faith, what do they really mean? And it says you must have faith in God. What does that mean? <clears throat> okay, well, I'm going to take another example of a guy who, who lived this system out. He was uh, Martin Luther. He was a monk, a Catholic monk, and what he did was he tried to dedicate himself, like all monks did, tried to dedicate his life to God, to please God, to, he wanted to ingratiate himself to God, and wanted to make God happy. <clears throat> so he uh, became a monk, wouldn't, didn't, uh, you know, forswore all kind of uh, of, of what you would call vices, didn't, wouldn't get married, uh, was a celibate. All of these things he was trying to do to please God. <clears throat> so, eventually he came to the point where he said, God is evil. Why is God evil? Because he tells us to do things that we cannot do. And then he sends us to hell for not doing them. So he had this list, and he was trying to live out his list of being a moral, moral list of morality. This is good, and this is bad. I'm going to do what's good, but I'm going to not do what's bad. And then he found out, well, can't do that. After years and years and years of struggle, he goes, God's just not nice, man. <clears throat> so finally, through reading the Bible, he came across this verse in Romans. It says, the just shall live by faith. Do you want to be just in God's eyes? Justified. A not guilty man. A, a one that God will look down on and says, you're good. You're just. You've been justified. I'm, you're accepted. Because of what? Because of what he was trying to do, this side, knowing what's good and knowing what's evil and choosing the good over the evil? No. The just shall live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in what? What Jesus Christ did when he descended. What he did. Saved us from our sins. He rose from the dead <clears throat> to, to, it was just a stamp of approval that what he did was right. That's what him raising from the dead was all about. God saying, I, I, I'm i proving this act. <clears throat> <clears throat> so having faith is all, you know, this whole idea is believing God, trusting God for everything in your life, uh, learning to pray. And not listening to pray, but learning to listen, to hear God's voice. God speaks to people if they listen, if they have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you've been revealed to them, God will speak to you. If he speaks to me, he'll speak to you. I'm not any, anybody that knows me. I ain't no better than any other human being on this planet Earth. <clears throat> I don't claim to be. I have never claimed to be. <clears throat> but I have faith in the faithful one, this guy. And this is where I've been trying to spend my life, is learning to have more and more faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and getting away from this ideal that <clears throat> good, that there are, the ideal that there are good Christians and bad Christians. That ideal is not in the Bible. There's not a hierarchy of, of, of Christians. And we cannot, Christians uh, and non-Christians are always judging Christians by their 
moral. Well, you're not, I don't think, you, you know, you're not morally perfect, so you're not a very good Christian, are you? No, you're a horrible Christian. Jeff, you're a horrible Christian because you do this, you said this, you act like this when I, this is the way I understand your actions, and so I judge you immoral. So how can you be a Christian? <clears throat> well, my, because this is being a Christian, and this is where I'm basing my whole, all my faith. <clears throat> and uh, so I guess that's it. Uh, the knowledge of good and evil is all about seeking God and not seeking wisdom or morality. Thank you.